Hello everybody, it's your girl Connie Kenneth and welcome back to my channel. Oh my goodness, it's just so strange for me to say that because I have been away for four days I think. But just, you know, just bear with me because I have been unwell but I'm back and you can still tell from my voice that I still haven't recovered my voice. I had a terrible cold and yeah, but you know what, I'm back. Okay, I'm back and I'm better and I'm stronger. Okay, so thank you and I want to welcome everybody who's joined my channel these past days and I'm so grateful to each and every one of you guys and thank you so much. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe and make sure you tell a friend, 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 tell another friend. Okay guys, and so let me also know where you're watching me from. Uh, that would be so uh, so cute, so very nice of you guys. So today we're going to um, react to uh, an, another video from Wodemeyer. So that is how Somalis are rebuilding their country after years of war. And as you can see from the landscape, my goodness, it's so beautiful. You know, the, the urban development is on point. You know, the country looks to be, you know, just getting up on its feet again and you know i feel that you know there is a lot that has been done yet to be done but we are on the right path so let's get straight into the video you know i want to i want to tell you guys how they like try and give yeah and thank you to everybody i know a few of you talked to me about the stick that um that what am i is holding so it's it's a wooden uh teeth brush okay so we have the same in kenya actually um, and it's very, it has some very nice properties for the teeth and teeth whitening as well. So, okay. So thank you for all of you who are engaging and I'm always so happy to, to reply to each and every one of you. So thank you so much. Somali, a chance. Mm -hmm. You know what? Coming mm -hmm. to this country, a lot of people told me so many things. Even when I arrived the very first day, they refused to allow me to enter. It took me like nine good hours. Right, I remember that, and I believe it's because there are so many people who come into Somalia and other African countries just showing a negative image of the continent, of the country. So I feel they're protecting their country against, you know, uh, people who are not well wishes. So in a way, we can understand, in a way, I understand them. But on the other side, um, fortunately, Wodemaye is there to, you know, just to to show the bright side of Somali and I'm so happy that the Somali um, you know customs allowed him to come in even after nine hours and this is the thing I always say like these content creators go through so much so so much to bring content so just support them and support Wodemeyer. At the airport but I was so I mean positive to come to the country just to come and see what the entire media is talking about is so true. I'm not here to tell you that Somali is the safest country in the world. No. If I should tell you that, which means I'll be lying to you. But I'm telling you that Somali... Yeah, no country is safe. You can't say a country is the safest country in the world. I mean, we have crime everywhere. But it's also nice to normalize that Somalia is like any other African country or any other country in the world. But you still, you can still have some criminal things here and there. But it does, does it make it like a horrible country? No, it doesn't. So I feel it's, it would be unfair if we, you know, if we said so. It's just like any other country right. in Africa that I've ever visited. Right. I mean, coming in here, at the similarities between Mogadishu and Dakar of Senegal, I mean, maybe some part of Ghana looks like this. So my brothers and sisters, give Somali a chance. Go live your... Yes, guys, and, and thank you to all of you who taught me so much. You have educated me so much. I know I said some stupid things because, I mean, just, uh, I think that's why we're watching these videos because they're helping us become more educated. And, uh, and you know, I didn't know about the Somali coastal line. You know, it's over, it's 1,000, no, 1,300 kilometers. And so that's crazy. I didn't know. And you see, through these videos, we are traveling and we are learning. Okay, so I feel that it's really nice. Um, I love it. I love, 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 love Somali already. And I want to come and visit now. Your life, come and explore. And you know what? What I'm gonna tell you, be positive. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the easternmost part of Africa. 
Somalia. Right. The country Somalia has been through a lot and it's currently famous for so many wrong reasons. Mm. Can I ask you a question? But make sure you reply me in the comment section. What did you know about Somalia before watching this video? Um, what did I know about Somalia? Because growing up uh, in Kenya, um, we had so many Somali refugee camps. We used to hear about, um, you know, the civil war in Somalia. And I feel that's the image we get. And then you get to know about the Al-Shabaab and stuff like that and so of course these are things that are really how do you say that are really talked about every single day on the mainstream media and then watching all these children who are dying of hunger who are you know it's terrible so that's the image that to be honest with you guys that's the image i had uh, about somalia before watching this video let me know in the comment section below if you're not from somalia or if you're a Somali in the diaspora and you've never been to Somalia, what did you think about Somalia before watching these videos? To be honest with you all, I was also a victim because I was super scared uh -huh. of coming to Somalia. Okay, yeah. Un des premiers trucs qui m'a choqué lorsque j'ai commencé ma vie de salarié, c'est que j'avais besoin d'une autorisation pour tout. Pour partir en vacances, euh, pour... <clears throat> I'm gonna stay in Mogadishu for two days. Extremely, like, I would like extremely scared. Right. I believe that I took the risk of coming to this country. Mm -hmm. But when I landed, I learned something new, and I just have to share with you all. And when he says taking a risk, it's not like it's the reality of the things, it's not like, um. You know, it's all like the sense of, oh my God, I'm going to Somalia, I might die. It's just, oh my God, I'm going to Somalia, but what am I going to find in Somalia? What am I risking my life? Because of all the things that the mainstream media has really, you know, stuck, stuffed in our heads about Somalia. So I understand completely. Touching down with Mogadishu is super crazy, man. Oh, it felt like we were touching down inside the Indian Ocean, man. I'm like, yo, can we see land already? <laughs> Wow, it's so beautiful. Behind me is the uh, Masjid Kaisbehesiga or the Islamic Solidarity Mosque. Oh. This mosque was built in 1987. Wow, that mosque is beautiful. Is it like the largest mosque in Somalia? Uh, by the Hammer Company uh, with the support of the Saudi king. Um, it was temporarily closed back in, t back in 1990. Of course, as you all know in the history, there was civil war. But then it was reopened back in 2006, and it's considered one of the most important mosques. The reason is, it's actually one of the largest, not one of the, the largest of the uh, Islamic mosque in the Horn of Africa. Let's continue with more history. Who does this man? It looks like a legend. This man, he's representing the common people. So, if you see he's holding the rock, yeah. and he's making one step forward. Right. You know, I feel like the one step forward action, it's like, let's move forward, you know, let's forget what has just happened and let's move forward. So that's a vibe I'm getting from this one. As you're about to throw a rock. Okay. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Okay, so he's holding a rock. So does it mean it was like, we probably don't have the, 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 what do you say, the, the necessary equipment to go to war, like the guns, this and that. But we will take the rock as a as a people and defend our country one step at a time. That's like the image I get right now. Let me know if I'm right. So the name is Dagah Tur. Dagah is a rock. Tur is throw. Throw okay. rock is basically the literal meaning. So what, what it represents is when the when we were trying to get rid of the colonists, the British and the Italians, this is basically saying, get out of our country. Oh, get out of our country. We are the people. We rule our country. We're going to defend our country. They didn't have guns. They didn't have uh, 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 anything to, to use against oh, the right. country. You see, I was right. Yeah, that's the... And it's a very strong image of the statue, you know. Okay. So we're using... They were using rocks. So the symbol of this man is a symbol of the people. 
uh, throw in the rock. Wow. We have to start somewhere. Wow. I mean, you village boy, if you defend yourself and you have nothing, you gotta start with uh, the start with the slippers. <laughs> <laughs> what does this monument represent? So, Maya, welcome back again. Today we are here at the SYL monument. As you can see, these are the 13 youth that came together to form a political party. Okay, 13. Okay, one, two, okay, eight. Okay, 13 youths. Oh, well done. So was this like the beginning of the political movement? So what was the name again? So this was like a, the, the beginning of the political scene in Somalia, right? Party. It was the first political youth political party, actually, okay. that was like... The S-Y-L. All right, so let me know in the comment section below what does the S and the Y L mean. So I would say the Y, the young or the youth league. I don't know. Let me know. It's, it, it, it's built the road for independence for the whole country of Somalia. Oh, wow. So basically, 13 yes, 13 youth, 13 youth, sorry, they came together to bring whole country together and form an independence. Whoa. So, yeah, so it has a significant uh, a spiritual and an inspiration for many youth in Somalia. Yeah. I don't think just in Somalia, yes. but the entire continent. Because right. I've been telling you guys that Africa is the future because the youth of Africa mm -hmm. needs to take up the mandate right. to fight for the freedom of our continent. Absolutely. Right. And, and so yes, the young people are the future. The, you educate a young person you're educating generations to come because that young person will grow to become a responsible human, someone who will fight for the country and so on. And generations to come, it will keep going. So yeah, of course, 100% the youth are the future. And this 13 youths, was it in 1943, uh, started a movement and which led Somalia into independence. So good job. So glad that I came here, man. Yeah, man. Wow. Yeah, right. so that's why we built this to... Just come and you know, like get inspired by them. Right. Like why they, like they started the whole initiative, and we need to bring back the like the whole uh, uh, achievement that they have fought for. Mm -hmm. So like that's this, the, the year 1943, right? Yes, that's when they formed that political party. But now, now we have this beautiful country because such of these amazing men. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you know, if you're from Somalia, please drop in the comment section below the name of these 13 young people, because I think we need to acknowledge them, we need to thank them, we need to uh, tell them how courageous they are, and are some of them still alive? Because 1943 is not so long ago, so I assume that most of them are still in politics, and most of them are still alive. So let me know in the comment section below the names of these 13 young people. So this Ooh. is uh wait a minute. Did I see Whoa, is that a woman with a narrow right through her heart? Yo oh my goodness. Somalia has really suffered and as much as many other African countries have really suffered and people had to sacrifice themselves for the country for the independence of their country this is another strong symbol my goodness so this is uh our taco monument uh is a very important monument to the somali people uh as you can see it's a woman she's mm -hmm. not only representing women she's representing the somali independence uh, as you can see there's a spear going through her heart uh she was killed in the middle of the action like in the middle of protest this, that tells you this country comes from a very far place. Mm. People shed blood to get the country where it is. Yahala Tako, not only was she a woman, she was a mother, and she was a representative of the Somali uh, country. And as you can see, the light she's holding, that's the hope that we still have today. Oh, wow. That's a strong... Uh, country. And as you can see, the light she's holding, that's the hope. <gasps> that's a strong symbol right there. <gasps> My goodness, hmm. I'm, I'm in deep awe right now because as much as countries have suffered over the years, I feel like Somali recently still, 
uh, suffered a lot. And now that you, as a young people, are constructing the country, it's a beautiful thing to see. And I know there are so many diasporans who are investing back home, um, how they are, you know, they're, they've gone abroad, you know, just as refugees. And, you know, um, and also now they're coming back home to rebuild the country. And it's a beautiful thing. And I'm telling you, the young people are the future. And let's not forget our heroes who died for our countries, who died for the, the, the freedom that we have today, who died for the education. And I feel, I know for a fact that Somalis have a very big respect for their women, you know. And I, I truly understand why. Because women um, are strong you know, a woman can undergo so much and still stands up, you know. You can just see that the symbol of this woman, I love this one. You know, she has this arrow that's just going through right through her body. And she's standing, you know, it looks like she has a torch. And, you know, she's like, I'm still standing. And then what, you know, I'm going to fight till my last breath. And I feel it's a beautiful symbol. And wow. Let me just say that I am so appreciative of this video because we are learning so much still and seeing all these monuments that represent something strong, you know, it's strong, symbolic, real people who actually underwent so much for Somalia, for their people, for their children. It's admirable and I'm so happy that things are, um, you know, going back to normal and uh, Somali is rebuilding um, the country and yeah and I love this love it good job that we still have today Mogadishu is a beautiful and big city we have beautiful beach food incredible culture and we love to stay here every single time Wadamaya welcome home welcome home we really love you and we always love to watch your beautiful videos that you are promoting the beautiful Africa. One love. <laughs> nice. Mm. And guys, just for, I saw a post, was it yesterday or this morning, from Wodemeyer, where he said, he showed like a screenshot of back in the days when he would ask his friends for one dollar just to promote him, just to sponsor him and help him reach his dream of you know changing the african narrative and and his friends made fun of him like dude come on you know and i think it's a clear it's a very clear symbol to each and every one of us when you have a dream go for it and i feel the somali young generation are ambitious young men and women who want to change the narrative of somalia and this is a very strong video because i'm sure it's going to change so many uh, mindsets so many misconceptions uh, about Somalia and it's it's beautiful so I love it yo I just bought into one of the most famous musicians here in Somalia and my brother nice to meet you man nice to meet you too. tell me something about your country yeah I'm Somali Sindhu my name is Dea so my welcome to Odisha wow. uh, yeah we are beautiful people and oh. amazing okay <laughs> So let me know in the comment section below what's the name of the musician. Do you know him? What kind of songs does he sing? Somali, of course, I believe, but do you know him? So welcome to Versa Kalatopia. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you. The country Somalia got one of the most beautiful beaches in the world. Yeah, white sand, just like at the coastal side of Kenya. Love it. You know what? I've been reading about the longest coastal line in Africa, mm -hmm. and I never knew a day would come. I will actually be walking along the longest coastal line in Africa. I mean, this is what makes me happy to go oh, out yeah. there and go live my life. <laughs> this is. I so am good. currently in Mogadishu, the capital of Somalia. Somalia. Yo. So, from this perspective, what do you see in the buildings? I mean, I've been here less than 24 hours, and what I can say is that Mogadishu is the city of contrast, because you see a beautiful building right there, mm -hmm. you see another building that was deteriorated during the war, so mm -hmm. literally, I feel like things are getting better, you know, so with time, definitely, when you come to Mogadishu, you will see Mogadishu this way, 
because everything is changing because you can't see for yourself, right? Because this was affected during the Civil War. Right next, the building behind is beautiful, you know, so it's happening, man. Right. It's lit. Before the Civil War, Mogadishu was the white spell of the Indian Ocean, mm -hmm. but the war destroyed everything. Do you ever have an idea of the Battle of Mogadishu or the famous movie Black Hawk Down? Where we are. Let me know if you if you watched that movie. I've never watched it, and I feel that I should probably watch it now that he's talked about it, because I think it it must be um. Wow, it must be a tough movie. So let me know if you've watched it. Please let me know. Yeah, right now, this is the exact location where uh -huh. the Black Hawk Down was shot down okay. right here. So yeah, Black Hawk Down happened here. And um, you know, it's not a good moment, but it's good to be here though. Right. Believe me or not, the spirit of the phrase never give up exists inside the people of Somalia. Right. Because despite the years of struggles and challenges, the people never gave up on this beautiful country. Right, and when you look at the beautiful smile from the Somali people, very honest, very friendly, very outgoing, and I'm talking about the Somalis have interacted with, be it in Kenya or in Sweden, because you have a very high population of Somalis in Sweden, then um, you will understand that these people have gone through so much. So, so that meaning that you know they appreciate it now that everything is back to normal peaceful and so on so guys oh my goodness mm, so sorry Mogadishu is rising mm -hmm. you know one thing that i've noticed here in Mogadishu that makes me so happy mm -hmm. is that when i got to Mogadishu i found out that businesses in this country are actually owned by the people of Somali, mm -hmm. which makes it more interesting. So if you're a tourist coming to Mogadishu or coming to Somalia, know that as an African, whatever money that you spend in here goes into the pocket of the people of Somali. Like, just take a look at the apartment right there. I would love to do a video on this, but I don't really have enough time. Mm -hmm. But this shows that Odemaya will definitely come back again in the next three months to show you what... In the background... Um, you know, on the right, it looks like the Eiffel Tower in Paris, you know, it's, it's a, just a structure, the way it's built, looks like the Eiffel Tower. Somalis are doing in their own country. Ooh. I always want to show you proof, you know, I don't like talking about certain things, whilst I know that it doesn't exist. You mm -hmm. see it right there? That building is owned by Somali. Ooh. This one right there is owned by a Somalia. This one right here that you see is owned by a Somalia. The one over there is owned by Somalia. Yeah. So, you know what? You just have to get rid of what you think about this beautiful mm -hmm. country and give this beautiful country a chance. Welcome home. Welcome to Mogadishu. Mm. Welcome to the beautiful Somalia. Oh, that's beautiful. Wow. Mm. In the past six years, we have witnessed the most uh, booming uh, buildings and constructions, people from the diaspora be coming back to the country, right. taking part in investment and rebuilding and mm -hmm. making businesses. We're going to meet many of them in the town. There's They open co uh, coffee shops, they open a massive restaurants and hotels. Like from That's what I was talking about. I've, I know this for a fact because I've interacted with Somalis and I know that in the diaspora they always give back home. They're always um, starting businesses at home. They're always, 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 always in the aim. The, the aim, their goal, their number one goal is to rebuild Somalia. So, and this is through empowering the youth, educating the youth, um, you know, creating employment and stuff like that. So this is the way to build a country. And so that is by empowering people in the country. And I thought it's fantastic. Look at all this you know, um, you know, young men and women who are actually, you know, uh, back to, to their country. Why? Because they want to see a better Somali. And I think that's very admirable. One star to five star hotels. It's really amazing. That's incredible. Uh, especially during, uh, uh, like, uh, the security, um, fiasco. In it's the country. clean. Imagine if we have... Look at how the streets are clean. Wow. Like, a long-term peace without any of this crazy hustling um, mm -hmm. explosions and all that 
and the insecurity and political crisis that we have, if we have a long-term peace and the people decide to agree to uh, and agree to live in peace, imagine what could have Mogadishu like become. Uh, Back in the days, you used to call Mogadishu the peril of Africa, by the way. That's the nickname of Mogadishu back in the days. So we want to get it back again and make it the peril of, of the whole Africa and the peril of the whole region. Right. Yeah, so welcome back to Mogadishu. I was yeah. so excited to see more Somalian diaspora returning back to make Somalia home again. Yeah. How, which year did you move to Somalia? Oh, yeah. Which year? 2014. And... Do you regret moving back in here? I don't. No. I don't. You can. You can. You can. You can. Mm. Do, you have, do you have a message for other Somalis living in the diaspora? If you have a message for them, what would that message be? Be like you and be a free bird and travel and see it, right? You got you to gotta right. see it to believe it Absolutely. and to live it. I, I just met right. this guy right here. He said, yo, what's your name? Yeah, my name is Mohammed. Mohammed. Yeah, we have seen you on YouTube before. Uh -huh. I was watching you last night. Oh, he has like an English accent, okay? Uh, oh, really? Yeah, I was watching wow. you last night. And I'm meeting you yeah, right here. Yeah, I, I was thinking, what are you doing there? Like, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Are you from Somalia? You're not Somalia? I mean, I love Somalia. I'm so glad that I came, man. Yeah, what, nice. what are you going to talk to people out there who has no, nothing, no idea about Somalia? Come, come back to the country, man. This is the motherland. Everyone yeah. come back. That's a message for Somalia. Yeah, everyone, everyone needs to come back home. Yeah. Why do they have to come back home? I don't. Why? It's why? The motherland. They... It's the motherland. We're not so bad at home. Home, man. You're born and raised in. Oh no, I was born in Somalia, but I grew up in England. And why did you come back? Um, I, I recently got married, actually. I got married. You got married. You <laughs> yeah, had to come back. Oh. Married, yeah. Wow. You look like somebody that I know, man. How are you doing? Oh, we look good. Brother, we, think, huh? we look good. Then. You look good. Yeah, you look like somebody that I know, man. Hey, yeah, yo. Yeah, yeah. I think he's expecting a different answer, you know, like Somali is, it's a unique city, one of the most incredible cities in Africa, right? Mm -hmm. 
do you regret? Yeah, because when you're home, you're with people who look like you. You have people who understand you culture-wise, who understand you as a person, where there is no like racial profiling, like in the West and stuff like that. So of course, when you're home, you know, like I said, East or West, home is always the best. And we are always attracted to go back home because that's where our roots are and that's where we feel comfortable with people who you know who are who love us for who we are and, and nothing more or less. So I understand you. Moving back to Mogadishu. No, no. And it's money. <laughs> <laughs> right. in Mogadishu. Do you think there are opportunities here in Mogadishu? Of course, there's so much opportunities. Uh-huh. It's like fertile land for any sort of idea that you have. You want to open right. a business. There's so much things you can do. There's so much, um, there's so much open areas. Like you, you want to open. I just saw recently a girl opened a flower shop, and I was like, amazing. We need flowers. I right. want flowers. You know. So there's so much opportunities here, and um, I think it's 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 a bit scary in the beginning, but once you're here for a little bit, you realize it's not actually mm. actually not so scary. Yeah, and that's the thing when it's like a fatal land, like she said. Uh, a, a row place it's like a whiteboard and it's up to you to 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 make something and to bring something into the country so you can just imagine the place where everything has to be reinvented again then of course i mean if you're a businessman a woman then it's a land of opportunities you know so um yeah so i understand and i agree with you 100 percent. you can just um make a lot of money in somalia if you have a message to your brothers and sisters living in the diaspora who has given up on Mogadishu, Somalia, mm-hmm. um, what are you going to tell them? I would say before they like just stick to that idea, they should give it a chance. Like I'm not going to say pack your bags. Mm-hmm. I would say come visit, spend some time here, not two weeks. You need to be here at least a month, two months, you know, and then maybe right. you'll, you'll actually enjoy it. And I've met a lot of people that after being here for a while, did decide, you know what, I could live here, I'm going to move here, so mm-hmm. just give it a chance. Mm. Did you see the dates? I love dates. For a while. I think those are dates, oh my goodness, and the Somali dates are actually the best. I remember when I was in primary school, we used to have a friend, um, I think his name was Mohammed, and he used to have, he used to bring dates to school, and I think that's the first time I tasted dates. And each time, you know, I would always ask him for dates. Like, he would just bring lots of them. I think they had, like, a date tree somewhere. In, I don't know. I don't remember. If, but they were so good. And, uh, yeah, Somali dates are, like, the best dates I've tasted so far. I decide, you know what? I could live here. I'm going to move here. So just mm-hmm. give it a chance. Don't believe what you see on the media. Right. Tell us something that we don't know about Mogadishu, Somalia? Something that you don't know about Mogadishu, Somalia. Mogadishu, Somalia is actually safer at night. <laughs> Surprisingly, people, they think that, you know, nighttime is a dangerous time to go out, but here, when it's 9 o'clock, you can say, you know what, now I'm not afraid, I can go outside, there's not going to be any bombings, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so that's something interesting. Yeah. How is life doing businesses here in Mogadishu? Um, it's not very easy, it's difficult, but when you understand how to run here, mm. actually this culture, when you understand, you can easily run. So, but which... In the beginning, it's uh, very hard. So, is it worth it to invest in Mogadishu? Uh, it's more than any other country, mm. especially in the Western, because this is a, it's a virgin country, you can invest in small money with a big businesses. Mm-hmm. If you have a mentality to, to, to do your own business and, and expand that business, you can do a really good job here. Mm-hmm. I, I want to ask this question. I think I forgot. Um, what are the kind of business opportunities that you see around that you think people can invest their money into? I think you'd be better at answering that. He's really, he's really into businesses. Well, um, you know, number one is a uh, property property okay. uh, land and other things and the other opportunities that are very available in here are more small businesses okay even coffee, coffee shops we need more coffee shops we need, we need to, to open more restaurants we need to open more uh, local plants and 
then we can take that brand to to the world or maybe Africa. So I think there's a lot of business. I wanna say thank mm. you so much for talking to me. Wow, guys. So thank you so much for watching. I really enjoyed this one. And I think the lesson we need to get from this one is it's up to the young people to build the country. If you're Somali in the diaspora, then it's up to you guys to come back home and rebuild and help rebuild the country in different ways, um, you know, in real estate, in, you know, just having small businesses like a coffee shop, a flower shop, and so on and so on. So listen, guys, I really enjoyed this one. And I I'm really, really proud of all Somalis who are out there, you know, trying to rebuild the country and doing their utmost best to do everything possible in their power to make Somali a great country and the pearl of the horn. All right. So thank you so much for guys for watching. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe and make sure you tell a friend, tell a friend, tell another friend and just join this family. And I'm so sorry for my voice my voice is out but anything for you guys and until next time thank you so much for watching and bye